Okay, today my video is about graphing inequalities. And usually when you're graphing, you're using the form y equals mx plus b. So that's the first thing you're going to want to get your line into. It's the first form that you want to get your line into before you graph. Um, only thing you need to know other than how to graph a line is if it's just less than or greater than, you use a dotted line. If it's got an equal sign, it means you include it, so we use a solid line. All right, so for the first one, made it really easy. Um, your slope is just the number in front of x, right? Because it's y equals slope times x plus v, slope intercept form. So our slope here is 3, or 3 over 1. And our y-intercept, as a point, is 0, negative 4. That's our b. b is y-intercept. So now we can graph. <clears throat> our y-intercept tells us our starting point, the first point we plot, which is down at negative 4 on the y-axis, because it's the y-intercept. And then from there, we go up 3 and over 1. So up 3 over 1 gives us our next point. And you can do a few more points. Up 3 over 1 again. About right there. And since it's equal to, <clears throat> we know we're using a solid line. So it is equal to, so we use a solid line for our three points. And that's it. Now, why is everything greater than or equal to this line? So, any point that's greater than this line is in our solution. So what we do is we pick a point on the line and it's everything straight up from that point. So you're shading everything above this line. Next example. Doesn't give, us, give it to us in y equals mx plus b form. So that's the first thing we want to do is get it there. Um, we want to get y by itself. And since we have another term on the side with it, we're going to have to add to get rid of it since it's negative. So we plus 1 half x plus 1 half x. So we get y is less than 1 half x plus 4. And from there, we know our slope is 1 half. And our y-intercept is 0, 4. <clears throat> so we can plot that point and use our slope to find the next point. Starting point 0, 4. So right here on the y-axis at 4. And from there we go using our slope, rise over run, up 1 over 2. And you really only need two points to graph a line. So once you plot that, you can start the rest of the work you have to do for the inequality. Since it's less than, we use a dotted line. So we know it's a dotted line between those two points. And now we have to figure out where to shade. So like I said, pick a point on the line. If it's less than, go straight down. So we're, we're shading everything below it, down here. Any number from here that you plug in, or any point from here that you plug in to this equation is going to satisfy it. It'll give you something that's true. Say you plug in 5 or 0, 5. If you plug in 0, 5 into this equation, you get 5 is less than 1 half times 0 plus 4, 5 is less than 1 half times 0 is just 0, 4. No, that's not true at all. So if you plug in any points above this, it does not satisfy the equation. And that's why we use the inequalities. <clears throat> One more graph. OK. All right, next we're going to be graphing systems of inequalities. So instead of just a single inequality, we're going to have two of them. And we're going to shade the area that satisfies both equations. All right, so first. We have equation 1 and equation 2. For equation 1, our slope is negative 3 halves. So our rise is negative 3, our run is positive 2. And it goes to the point 0, 1. Our second line has a slope of 2, or 2 over 1, that goes to the point 0, negative 2. 
So from there, we can grab it. So our first line starts at 1 on the y-axis, and we go down 3 over 2. So down 1, 2, 3 over 2. There's our, first, our next point. And our first line is less than, so it's a dotted line, and we shade less than that line. So it's everything below it. But we don't want to shade right yet because we don't know <clears throat> where our other line is going to hit. So pick a point, and it's everything less than that point, so you go straight down. So we know our line, under, under this line, we're shading everything under it. And our next line, we start at negative 2, and we go up 2 over 1. So up 2 over 1 is going to bring us to here, and it's a solid line because it's equal to. Okay. And from here, it says greater than, so that means we shade everything above this line, pick a point, everything straight up. So from that line, it's everything greater than, and then you look where both of your arrows are pointing. All right? Now, some people lightly shade above this line and lightly shade above this line, and wherever the shadings cross, that's where your solutions are. But I use the arrows, wherever they both point is where I shade. So it's everything this way. Next example, we have x is greater than 3. Um, that doesn't really have a slope um, because <clears throat> the slope for any x equals line is undefined. But we can still do the same thing. Um, call this equation 1 and this equation 2. We know equation 1 from before is a vertical line. And equation 2 has a slope of 3 fourths, and it goes through 0, comma, negative 1. So now we can graph it. So our first line, the vertical line, passes through x equals 3, which is right here. And it is a dotted line because it's not equal to. Now, you can't use my straight up, straight down trick with this. But since it says x is greater than 3, you're looking at all your x values that are positive, not towards the negative. So when you shade, it's everything greater than that line. So you know it's going to be everything that way. And the second line starts at negative 1 on the y-axis <clears throat> with a normal slope up 3 over 4. So up 1. 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's our point. It's a solid line because it's equal to. And it's less than, so it's everything. Take a point less than that line. So wherever both the arrows are pointing, that's where you shape. So our solutions lie in this area. 